if you want to edit the keyframe of um, your planet, let's say you're not happy with how fast it's going, and you've already moved your time slider away from it, you've got to be careful that you don't change the rotation like this um, without your time slider being in the correct position, because you will add another keyframe, and you'll find that your planet, all of a sudden, um, the animation is, is really messed up. So if you want to change the value of a keyframe after you've moved this, just hold down Shift on your keyboard and drag the time slider, and as soon as it gets near a keyframe, it will snap to it. And that once it's snapped on top of the keyframe, you can then go ahead and change the value. Um, but you have to hold down Shift to snap to the keyframe before you edit that, and then you can go and change its speed. We're now ready to copy the effects that this planet or this image has on it uh, to some more images as well now. So I'm going to uh, collapse down my, all my effect settings here so I can quit, I can just see the word effects on its own. With that word highlighted, so if I click on that word, I can see it's selected within the layer. I'll hit Control c on the keyboard. I've now copied those effect settings for that layer onto my clipboard. I'm now going to go to my project area and import some new images. If you can't see the project area, um, you may just have to expand this section out on the left until you see the project tab appear over there, and then I'll just put it back. Um, I'm now going to drag in probably, yeah, just I'll do it one at a time. I'm going to drag in the ocean layer. Um, this is just a mask for the ocean. Again, I'm dragging it into the actual layers down here as opposed to the viewable workspace because even if it's a few pixels off like this it will not layer on top of the planet properly which is why I'm only dragging my images into my layers area um, and it will place them all exactly in the middle um, up here. So after you dragged in your ocean you should be able to just do control V uh, while making sure the layers active do control V and it should paste if I drop down here, yeah, the effects from the continents layer has been pasted onto there as well. Uh, and now we can go ahead and sort the ocean layer out. If when you pasted this, uh, these effects, uh, the ocean, for example, doesn't line up and looks something like this, it's because your time slider was not at the beginning. It was not at zero when you pasted. So make sure that when you um, hit copy and paste, your time slider is always at zero. Um, so if, that, if you've done that wrong, delete that and do it again. Uh, I'm now going to demonstrate you a, a technique called masking in After Effects. Uh, and I'm going to use a different image for this just to make it really simple. Um, but if you have an image or a video in After Effects and you only want to see a certain part of it and get rid of the rest, you can actually cut that out um, and so with the layer that you want to cut out selected you can go up here and you can either use the pen tool or if you click and hold on here you can use these default shapes um, and you can actually cut out your image so making sure your layer is selected otherwise it'll just draw a normal shape like you would get in PowerPoint or something make sure your layer is selected and now if you were to click and drag um, it will only fill what's inside that shape and then you can go ahead if you go into the drop down into the mask section you can see it's created something called mask one you can then click on the boundary of that mask to choose where you would like to crop into you could even go ahead and invert that mask so you can see through it as well and if you expand out this mask one option you can see there's options called mask feather which basically gives it blurry edges like this um, and so you can have uh, an effect uh, that way as well. So if you have a normal image or a video, a mask will work straight off the bat, just like that. Unfortunately, with this planet, because it has some other effects directly applied to that layer, if we were to go ahead and try and draw a mask on that, one of two things will happen. Either your computer will crash, or um, it will just get really glitchy and maybe go inside out. So I'm not even going to dare to create a mask on this ocean. Essentially what I want to leave is a circular highlight of the sun's reflection on the surface of the water. Um, at the moment obviously it looks like it's filled with milk and I don't want that. So I've got to sort this layer out so that it's uh, inside another layer that does not have these effects directly applied to it. So this might get a bit confusing but it's kind of like the film Inception now. We're going to start to put layers 
inside of other layers. And this is called pre-composing. Um, I have to give, in this instance, I have to give this layer so a friend to go with so that I can group it. After Effects doesn't like it if I try and group this object on its own um, in this instance. So quite a lot of the time uh, when this sort of thing happens, you need to go to Layer, New, and go to Null Object. Okay, A null object is an object that is null. It has no value to it whatsoever. It is just a thing that you can't see or hear or interact with in any way. But it's a trick, which means I can now select this null object or this invisible object and hold down control and select the this milky ocean layer together. I can now go ahead and group them. And after effects to group things, you go to composite. No, you get a layer, pre-compose. And that pre-compose, uh, we have to name that. It's going to name this ocean or ocean highlight. And go ahead and hit OK using the default uh, settings on there. OK, you can now turn that on and off and you can see uh, the null object has disappeared. If you want to see what's inside of a group, you have to double click on the ocean highlight um, in this tab here. And once you double click on it, it would open up a new tab here and show you the uh, contents of that. I've unfortunately selected that. I want to cut that out and uh, should be fine now. Okay, so we can now turn this on and off like this. We can move it around, and if we go to the drop down area here, we can see that the ocean highlight no longer has an effects input going into it. Um, this tab here, which is obviously um, that going inside that layer there, we can see that the ocean still has those effects, but they're going on inside the group and they're not going to interfere now with our masks. So now that we've pre-composed the oceans layer, I should be able to go to the ellipse tool. Um, it's the shortcut is Q on the keyboard to bring this up and make sure you scroll down and choose the ellipse tool by clicking and holding and changing on that. And if you hold down shift, you should be able to draw a perfect uh, circle onto your planet. Draw a circle that's about quarter of the size of your planet, something like that. Um, somewhere over the ocean and certainly on the side of your planet that's receiving the sunlight. So now we're going to go down to open up um, our mask settings to play around with this. If you can't see this, just drop down of your ocean highlight layer. Obviously it had to be selected for you to be able to draw this shape. Go to masks and drop down mask one. The first thing I'm going to do is increase the feather so it doesn't look so stupid. And we can now, if you make it really blurry, you can sort of see, if you were to drag your time slider along, the highlight stays in place while the Earth, while the planet spins. And so it just makes it look like the sun's reflecting off of the water in there as well. So you can feel free to move this into a position that works for you. Um, if you want to move this around, just drag. Make sure you have Mask 1 selected like this, or you can just click on the word Mask 1. Then click on a boundary or a point like this and you can move it around. If you've deselected, um, just click on mask one and you can move it. Um, but I'm just gonna move it to somewhere uh, about, about here will be fine. So I've made the mask feather about 320 pixels to give it a really soft highlight. Um, I want this highlight to be blue though, not white. So I need to now give this layer um, an input for hue and saturation. I want to tell it to have a different color. So on the right hand side you should see a panel called effects and presets uh, and in there there should be the color correction and inside color correction should be hue and saturation. If you can't find that just type in the word hue up here and it should pop up. With your ocean layer selected double click on hue and saturation And it should bring up the effects controls over here. If you can't see that, just make sure you click on the tab next to project that says effect controls for the selected layer. And you can now see um, all of this. Once this is here, we need to check the box called colorize. You might see a little bit of coloration in the, in the fringe of your um, mask over here. Um, and once you check that, this bit area gets grayed out, but you can still change the settings down here. I need the saturation um, to be 
I'll leave it where it is for a minute, but I want the lightness to be minus 20. Okay, and once it goes away from being pure white, it gets more of a chance to change the colour. Uh, and I want to change this to a nice turquoise layer. So you can use the colour ice hue to go around and change this to a nice shade of blue that you feel works well. So again, we can preview this. If I just click away and deselect, I can drag my time slider or go ahead and hit play. Um, and the highlight should stay where it is and give the, the oceans that reflective look.